Then I get a little thumbnail, you know what I'm saying? Welcome back to my channel. It's your country cousin Amber and today we are going to be chit chatting and coloring my hair and I'm just going to be talking to you guys about um, pretty much where I've been answering a couple of questions I've been getting in the daily stories and just you know chit chatting with you about everything that's been going on with me. Okay so let's just go ahead and get started. Um, I am going to be coloring my hair with a semi-permanent color today. This one is by Beyond the Zone, BTZ Color Jam, and the color is in Crimson Storm. But I've actually used a little bit of this in my hair, so long story short, if you guys are an OG cousin or you are familiar with any of my recent videos, um, I have been coloring my hair. I'm not sure exactly when I did that very first lift of my hair, but actually I am planning on going back to black very soon. I just love black on my hair. I especially like to go black. I feel like I'm the opposite from a lot of people. I really like to go black in the hotter seasons. I just like the way that black hair looks in summer. And um, I, you know, I'm just ready to go back. So um, I do want to mention, uh, first of all, my hair is clean and I just have been letting it t-shirt dry for um, probably about the last two hours. And shrinkage is on 10, but if my hair looks a little bit shorter, it's because I did go ahead and trim my hair. My hair was really raggedy. And I had tried to record that footage for you guys, but it really ended up not being anything worth seeing. I kind of just trimmed off dead ends while my hair was already in the twist and then I kind of touched it up after I did a wash and go. So I'm just going to go ahead and start sectioning it off and then also since I'm just getting rid of this color I do only have one bottle so this is not going to be a drastic change. I'm going to tell y'all that right now but just to add a little bit more vibrancy in my hair for you know some pictures and stuff you know. Unfortunately beauty supply stores are not essential businesses <laughs> jk you know i understand that they're not essential businesses but with that you know with us not being able to go to beauty supply stores i haven't been able to get my hands on any black dye i know i can order it and then i read somewhere even that sally's is doing like curbside i think i saw that on twitter but yeah i don't know if it's that deep so <laughs> also i only have one glove so it's gonna get a little messy most times I don't even use gloves at all, so it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> and normally, again, normally I put this in a, um, let me shake it up a little bit, in like a color applicator bowl, but child, we just winging it, okay? We're going to be in the house for at least, I don't know what they said, 30 days, but if we're being realistic, it's probably going to be way longer than that because y'all don't listen. <laughs> y'all are still out. Y'all still thinking it's okay to have little small kickbacks with your friends and going places and just eh, traveling and stuff. So y'all don't listen. So <laughs> we are going to be on lockdown probably for a while now. So yeah, I just have been, you know, well, okay. And I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about this and just, you know, also to give y'all maybe something to think about um, with your expectations from influencers and vloggers during this time. Because I'm noticing a lot of people like, oh, you know, oh, that's going to be very pretty. That's going to be pretty. If you're an influencer, you should be putting out so much content right now because everybody's at home and you know this will be great for your brand which you know is true i'm sure the amount of content that people are consuming right now is crazy like i don't doubt that but also you know on the one hand for me somebody who stays at home you know 90 percent of the time it's not necessarily the quarantine that's getting to me, like I don't mind being in my house, except when you tell me I can't go nowhere. <laughs> you know, like then you really wanna go somewhere. I don't know if it's just me, like I ain't wanna go nowhere until 
they started telling me that I couldn't. For me, and I know there are other people out there, it's not necessarily the quarantine, it's the circumstances around it. And I am an empath, and I have talked to you guys about this over on Instagram and as well on Twitter, but I am an empath, so everything that's going on is affecting me, like, and this is gonna stain my nails, but it's time for me to do a new set anyway. It is affecting me, so for me, like, it can be hard when you are worried about your family members and you are worried about just, you know, people in general, people on the front lines, just seeing how scary it is. And I'm looking in the mirror, if you guys see me, like, just looking off camera and out of the way. Um, just seeing how scary it is, and I do, <laughs> live in LA where it has gotten extremely real out here, you know, um, it can be a little hard to me to just jump on camera, y'all, like, or at least for me, like, it can be hard to just jump on camera with everything going on, all the crazy stuff we hearing in the news, y'all crazy, a president, like, child can be hard to hop on here. And I know on camera, y'all may not be able to see it, but I'm getting a pretty good color payoff. And I'm gonna, um, once once I apply it, I'll make sure I say, ooh, trying to get every drop, honey. So I only got one bottle. Thank goodness. In these situations, I thank goodness for lower density hair. Cause I know I'll at least be able to get a good little pass over my whole head even if it ain't super saturated. But um, yeah, so with everything, it can kind of be hard to then watch out it and just hop on and be like, hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you something super insignificant with everything going on. <laughs> and on the one hand, it's like, okay, if you're anything like me, sometimes you need that. Like sometimes you need to watch something super insignificant to take your mind off. I'm good for that. Like I love, when I'm stressed, like I love to watch comedies or listen to something funny or, you know, watch funny videos on social media and stuff. So I get the need for distraction and there's definitely a need. And also not saying anybody who is able or was able to immediately, you know, hop into grind mode is wrong or unfeeling. But for me, it was a lot, you know, I had to process the mental first. Like I had to take care of the mental. My, my brain like, okay, here's the time. Here's the time to take for yourself. And so sometimes that'll be a day where I just hop off social media, completely turn my phone off and, you know, find something that doesn't have to do with social media, whether it be crafts, you know, teaching myself something new, which I'll get to in just a second. Um, something, you know, sometimes that'll just be it for the day. And then sometimes it looks different. Sometimes that just means diminishing my presence on social media. Like, um, being able to be a consumer with social media instead of a, um, what, a producer. <laughs> like, because, you know, the majority of the way that I engage with social media is not as a consumer. Like, I do consume. Obviously, I watch other people. But it's also usually in conjunction with being a producer. Like I am pl either planning new content or researching trends or I just uploaded something. So then that's why I'm on social media to be able to consume what's there because I, a lot of times I don't even log on to social media unless I got something that I need to <laughs> post or tell people or something. And then I start engaging because I think I want to support my friends and see what they posting and see people who inspire me if, you know, they can inspire me to create new content. It just means that I like to switch over to being in consumer mode. You know, sometimes I just want to take a couple days, sometimes a couple weeks, and just be a consumer. So, you know, giving yourself some grace and just, you know, knowing there is a time to grind and there's a time to rest. And you can simultaneously incorporate both. It, understanding that everybody's personality, everybody's work mode is different. And sometimes I think people not understanding that everybody's work mode is different can criticize people's work ethic. And just because your work 
mode looks different don't mean you don't have the same work ethic as somebody. You just may have a different way of getting to it. I'm gonna like that. I'm gonna like that. I'm gonna like that. Oh, oh, oh. So what I've been doing in this time is just been taking the opportunity to just I don't know, just feed myself mentally and creatively and learning new things. You guys know I love teaching myself new things. And that's one thing I wanted to kind of talk to y'all about, like, and to say with love, because I, I have been teaching myself new things, especially if you watch my stories or follow me on other platforms. You know, like recently, um, I have embarked on a sewing journey and it started, um, I, I, I had been told myself I wanted to um, teach myself how to sew. It was like a goal of mine for like the last couple of years and just really haven't made time for it. And then with everything that had been going on with and people saying they need a mask and stuff, I was like, oh, all the tutorials started popping up. I was like, that looked like something, a, a easy place to start, just a basic place to start with learning how to make myself <laughs> a mask like just learning how to make myself a mask with a filter i thought it would be something that would be fun and easy to learn so i ordered a cute little sewing machine off of amazon and i did make a tiktok about it and people started asking me you know hey can you make me one or can you send me one like people that i knew personally and stuff and um then i was like okay yeah because i do have a lot of family um because it was like family members and stuff and I was like, yeah, I want to um, send some to my family. I have a lot of family, like nurses. And then I had a couple friends reach out and be like, hey, can you send me one? So then it turned into a thing where it's like, okay, this is something. This is a, a small way that I could give back. And then I'm not even going to lie, that started to overwhelm me a little bit. <laughs> like it's just something I started off doing for fun. And now, you know, when you have to do something for other people, then your craftsmanship becomes a little bit more important when it's something that you are just learning. I really am just learning this. And people be like, oh, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I'm just like, I care. <laughs> I care. I don't want to send you anything that is not going to be useful to you, especially something like a face mask during this time. Then randomly, it's just something that I always pick up. Like every few years, I'll pick it back up which is crocheting and crocheting is something that is like kind of special to me it's close to my heart because my great grandmother um so not my grandmother my great grandmother taught me how to crochet when i was really young my great grandmother is still alive and um it was one of the first things that i ever remember her teaching me and i remember her just sitting me in her lap and holding my hands and hers and kind of teaching me how to hold my hands. And I don't know, I have an obsession with my granny's hands. I may be the only person like that, but I love my granny's hands. She always have her nails done. She always have on like a whole bunch of rings. Just, I always thought she just had the prettiest long slender fingers. I still think she does just to sit and just crochet something. I don't even know how to make stuff for real other than <laughs> scarves, hats, and blankets, okay? But this time around, I said I want to learn how to make other things like butterflies. My granny loved to make butterflies, all different colors and stuff. Out of crochet, like that's so cool. We like to crochet an animal, an insect, I guess. <laughs> and it, it just never fails. Like as soon as I posted that, um, crocheting and making a blanket it's like uh, immediately people start being like girl new hustle alert <laughs> you know what that mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. girl you can start selling them and stuff like that and i'm just like oh lord like got money money, money. yeah y'all yeah. had did the same thing to me when i said i wanted to do nails it's like Oh, hustle girl, you can make some money. You need to start taking appointments and is you gonna do my nails and all this? And it's like, no. <laughs> Y'all did me the same way when I first started doing natural hair. Folks, 
trick me into doing nay hair and nay braids. Every time I learn something new, I learn how to do Marley twists. Folks wanted me to do them, and I learn how to do you know faux locks, and folks wanted me to do them on them. Man. Doing natural hair, folks want me to do their wash and goes. It's like, child, I do not be learning this to do y'all hair. <laughs> like, I be learning this to do my hair. And that sounds so bad, but I know somebody out there has to feel me. Like, prime example, like, everybody who know how to do makeup do not want to be an MUA. Some people just want to know how to do, most people just want to know how to do their own makeup. I'm that person who just likes to learn new things. So, I'm just really over and over again this is how people love to argue with me about the density of my hair but y'all see how many times i'm able to go over these same sections with this one bottle of color so i thank y'all for thinking that my hair is thicker those people who want to argue with me about how thick my hair is i thank you <laughs> for thinking that my hair is thick but i think i know all the people who always comment you know ready for us out because i appreciate you know Y'all wanted me to get in my bag, child. I appreciate it. I always, you know, want to be in my bag. But sometimes, like, so I say all that to say, um, I've been really debating because I've been really crafty, like really crafty during this um, quarantine between sewing and crocheting and my nails and all this other stuff that I have in mind that I want to do that I haven't even started learning yet. I have been debating on making like a specific Instagram page dedicated to just like all my crafts, but I haven't decided yet. So if I think of a really catchy name, I think that'll probably um, like make the deciding factor for me, but it can't be lame. <laughs> like you gotta be catchy, you gotta be cute. Okay, so I know my face is real blown out and overexposed, but I wanted to show y'all cause I know it wasn't doing it justice a few minutes ago like the color payoff before I rinse it out of course it's not gonna be this bright once I rinse it out but I did use the entire bottle can I get a thumbnail but yeah I did use literally the entire bottle of this I'm gonna let it sit for probably 30 minutes to an hour then rinse it out really well of course condition my hair again and then style it which won't be in this video but i will come back and show you guys like what it finally looks like when it's rinsed out all right so this is what my hair is looking like and i do still have that it's gonna take a couple days for it to come off but yeah um, i'm not mad at the color payoff Cheryl, that's a red on my neck and everything um, i'm gonna end this video here and i'm going to twist my hair up and just leave it alone so i hope you guys enjoyed chit chatting with me coloring with me let me know what you think of the red down in the comment section if this was your first time visiting my channel of course make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and i will see all you guys in the next upload